we're going to create a strapo. A strapo is basically a monotype. It's a dry acrylic transfer that's painted in reverse on glass. So when we start the painting, we'll be looking at what is most important to us and what is going to be at the forefront, at the front of our painting. We start to develop this and you can see that the first stroke is bright and in front. The third stroke, which is putting on now, might be in the back. So you get these movements of space and you, you create them as you move along. So this particular hill is in the front while this might be in the background. So we've created something that is actually in reverse. And as you develop, you start to see the excitement of, of experimentation. You don't really know exactly how this will play out, but you get a feel for it. You get a feel for how you may want to break up some of the shape and then come back in to highlight it. Each time you have to be aware of, of where the front is and where the background is. Which ones do you want to seep through and which ones do you want to be very, very strong? Like I don't want this as strong. I want it to fade into the distance. And we will develop the sky later, but because we need the ground in the forefront, we need to get that first and let that dry and develop. And we can come back and add more and then we can build on that. Now I've gone around and looked at the front of this, so I have a sense of where I want to go next. I can use the brush to almost lift some of the paint off because it's only partially dried. And by doing that, I now have a space I can go back in. When thinking about a sky, you know that the blue is going to be the background. So you need to be working your clouds in there and get a sense of layering for the clouds because clouds are very three-dimensional. They're the ones, the part that'll really help you to see this piece. So that while I'm putting this crimson onto the piece, you'll be able to see that only a little bit of it starts to come through. And I start to move into some deeper greens. Yeah, a little bit of a fallow green here. So we start to get some depth again, the background, the horizon. You can see it's got a, a touch of, of orange in there, just along the skyline, but not a, not a cadmium orange, just a, a orange, maybe a little bit lighter, maybe grayed out just a bit, just so that we start to see what that horizon line, you start to see it, it starts to wash out almost grays out. Now, I don't want to forget this line that I developed here. I developed it very bright white. Now I'm going to dull it down because again it was translucent so I'm able to develop more here and get a nice contrast. And We'll take a look at how that is. The, the exciting part about working in strapo and, and, and in painting in reverse is that you're not always sure what's on the other side. So you're, you're kind of intuitive about what you think is going to be there. At this point, we need to start thinking about what we're going to do up in here. Now, we're, we're talking sky, so traditionally you would think blue. I've put some white clouds in here, but um, let's pick up some, just a touch of the crimson in here in the sky. I'm going to put some of this fallow blue in here because I really, really want that depth in that sky around those clouds. And I'm not done making clouds, so I'm not going to fill the whole area. But by just doing that little bit, you can see what you start to pick up. I decided to pick up some more clouds and create some more action in here. I'll get a little bit of sunset here. Once the acrylic painting has been completely developed, 
successive layers of gesso are placed on the back to build a skin that can be peeled off so that you can have a dry acrylic transfer. You start with the edges and you start to work the piece across and you can see that because glass is not absorbent, as I've said before, it does not hold the acrylic paint to it. Once the acrylic transfer, the scrapo, has been completed and removed from the glass, you'll see that it has a very shiny coat, a very sticky coat. So what you want to do is, as quickly as possible, you want to get it set onto a board. Here I'm using a museum quality board to have it set down on to dry. I later will attach this, glue this down. Right now, with this shiny surface and this tactile surface, you want to stay away from it a little bit. The gel medium works very good as an adherent. So it, it tacks it down, it holds it down, and you now have an isolation level between the piece and the museum board so you can continue to have an archival sense of it.